Welcome to this new episode at Economics Design. At Economics Design, we focus on all the fundamentals. How tokens work, how tokens are designed, and how do we analyze the health of these token ecosystems. Today, we're going to discuss something interesting. We're going to talk about Trader Joe, which is a DEX on Avalanche. We haven't covered Avalanche, the blockchain protocol before, and this will be the first protocol or the first application that we're going to discuss that is built on Avalanche. So let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about the economics of Joe. And this is a DEX on Avalanche. We're going to cover five things. What is Trader Joe? What the highlights are? What the products are? The token design, as well as concluding with some thoughts and opinions. At its core, it is a spot DEX. It means that you trade it at spot rate. The other alternatives would be margin DEX or derivatives DEX. These are different products that you can exchange. A DEX is really a decentralized exchange. You get to exchange tokens for another. Here it's very simple, very basic. You exchange token A for token B, that's it. So very simple, very easy to understand. They also have other services. And so think of it as, you know, we talked about the application layer and aggregation layer. So at its core, it's application, it's the DEX. But building on top of the DEX, they also have other kind of products that we'll go and dive a little bit deeper later. And you can see how it all comes together, how it helps to leverage what DEX provides. So let's talk about three highlights. So let's go back to the economics design framework. Here we talk about market design, mechanism design, and token design. These are the three different pillars when you design your token ecosystem. In market design, what you're looking at is how do we define the market? How do we create the market? Mechanism design will be the rules in the market. When people come to trade, which is a market, they need to abide by some rules. And these rules are not subjective to people. Everyone who comes into the market have to abide by these rules. So what are the rules? This is everything we discussed in mechanism design. And lastly, we have token design. Token design here specifically is talking about the native token of this ecosystem. And token design covers everything about the Joe token, which is the main core token of this ecosystem. So let's start with market design. And one of the things in market design is ease of use. We see that in Trader Joe's ecosystem, where you can exchange a token for an LP token with one click. What does that mean? So previously, what's an LP token or liquidity provider token? You have to provide two tokens, token A, token B, and then you get your LP token that represents your holdings of token A and token B. Today, it's slightly different. You can just give a token A and then you will get the LP token because they will sell half of it for token B. And then you have the correct proportion of token A and B, and then you get an exchange token. So this is a lot easier because a lot of people might not understand how to be a liquidity provider, but they do have token A. What they do, they just send token A to this Zappa, click it, and then they get an LP token out. So it's very easy to use. The second thing is an aggregation for other services. Yes, we talk about at its core, it is a DEX, but there are a lot of other services that's built upon it, which makes it a lot easier for new users to come in and have a one-stop shop for all the services that they need in DeFi. So now let's move to mechanism design. In mechanism design, we talk about a few things and the two things that I want to highlight. The first one is governance because this is very important. The whole point of a decentralized system is that you decentralize power and power means governance of the system. How do you govern that? The second thing that is also very important in mechanism design, the rules, is that how do you structure your market? What's the market structure? How do you price things? Can people bargain? What are the different variables that determine the market structure of your system. So market structure would be monopoly, oligopoly, perfect competition, things like that. But how do we put that into context in a token ecosystem? Simply, what's governance? The Joe token that we have over here, so Joe is the trader Joe token. This is the governance token to govern the entire ecosystem. We'll talk about that later into more details. That's the general idea. And the second thing is the market structure. The DEX has a similar mechanism to Sushi. Firstly, the DEX is a fork of Uniswap. So it's core logic, Uniswap version 2, it's similar. And it has all the other added features, which is a little bit more similar to Sushi. So if you understand the Uni system, or if you understand the Ethereum ecosystem, then it gives you some context of how Trader Joe is in the Avalanche system. So what are these different products that I'm talking about? In the market structure, which is how you define the market, how do you allow traders to come together and exchange, that's all in the market structure. We are talking about not just one market structure, which is the DEX. We're talking about a variety of them. Specifically, there are six different products 
in this ecosystem that is part of the market structure. So the first one is its core product. It's the trading. You trade token A for token B. That's it. Very simple, very easy. The second one is the LP, the liquidity pools. Here, you get to earn fees by being a liquidity provider. You're earning in the foreign fees. So if I have token A and token B added together, let's say one is Joe and one is AVAX, you put them together as a liquidity provider, you get to earn fees when people trade. So just the regular transaction fees you get to earn. The third one is a farm. So the farm is where you get to earn new native tokens, new native Joe tokens. So what you do, you take your LP tokens and then you can deposit it in a farm. So not only are you earning part two, which is your fees. Number three, you're earning new trader Joe tokens. So new native tokens, the Joe. Number four, you can lend. So you can lend and borrow assets. That's something that they're developing. That's something they're going to add into the ecosystem soon. Number five, you get to stake. So stake is where you get to earn Joe in fees, which is different from farm because farm is where you earn new Joe tokens. Stake is where you earn additional Joe tokens that circulate. How does it work? Transaction fees, right? When you're trading, you have to pay transaction fees. It's 0.3%. And of this, 0.25% goes to your LP, which is where you earn the fees in foreign tokens. And then 0.05% goes to people who just stake Joe. So why is it different? Because the economic agents are quite different. For LP, these are people who are providing liquidity into the pools. And of course, they get to earn the transaction fees. With Joe, with the staking mechanism, you only earn in Joe. This is slightly different because these people might not be providing liquidity to a liquidity pool. They just have the Joe token. And what can you do with the Joe token? You get to stake in this system and get to share rewards. And lastly, we have Zap. Zap is where you get to swap tokens for the LP tokens very easily. So these are the six different products. They form up the market. Each of them are structured in a different way. So they're very different market structures. In a token ecosystem, you don't need just one market structure. You have one market structure per market that you're creating. Market is where people come together to trade. And the reason for them to trade could be very different from different kind of markets that you create. So now let's dive a little bit more into token design. What is the token? What is the token about and some details about it? So who are these token holders? Number one, they are the Joe token holders itself or the liquidity provider. So the interesting thing about Trader Joe is that they didn't get any investment. They didn't get any investors on board. It was just launched. And the only way to get the tokens is for you to be providing liquidity or staking Joe. So think of it as a proof of work. You have to prove that you are working for the protocol, which is to provide liquidity. Then you get to have additional tokens to give you. So there is no investors as of right now. Where is it found? It's found on the Avalanche ecosystem. So this is where you have a lot of different blockchain underlying infrastructure. You have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, all these different stuff. One of them is Avalanche. Avalanche is an up and coming protocol. There are a lot of liquidity being pulled in there. There is a lot of value being locked and it's growing quite tremendously. So Trader Joe is helping to facilitate that growth in the Avalanche ecosystem. So how can we get tokens? By staking, by farming. That's it. You stake by staking the Joe itself and you farm when you have liquidity pool or if you're a liquidity provider and then you get to farm Joe based on your LP tokens. How many tokens are there? There are a total of 500 million Joe tokens and it's going to be split by 50% liquidity providers. So it's a bit of just tokens given to the community. You have treasury, which is 20%. You have the dev team, which is 20% and future investors, 10%. What are they going to do with the 20% in the treasury? They didn't talk about it yet, but that's just going to sit in the treasury for now. One of the things that a lot of people talk about right now is the PCV, the protocol controlled value. And this 20% of treasury is the first part of this PCV, the first things that is in the treasury that the protocol can control. The 20% is for the dev team because, well, people built this product, so you need to reward the team. And that's where 20% goes to the dev team. The future investors, they don't have it right now. So future investors could be either investors or partners or whatever that they can think of. This is where tokens will come in to be allocated there. What is the token function then? The two, one is a utility function and one is a governance function. Right now, the core is the governance function and utility, you get to earn some Joe tokens as rewards in this system. And what is the usage? You get to vote, you get to earn revenue, and you get to earn some rewards. Revenue is what we talk about of existing circulating Joe. Reward are the new Joe that will be minted, which is what we see in the farming mechanism that we talked about just now. So governance, I told you we'll talk a little bit more about governance. 
And the Joe token governance is actually quite interesting because we have a lot of other governance protocols or governance mechanisms that we've seen in the Ethereum ecosystem so far. The Joe is slightly different. Joe, instead of one Joe, one vote, these votes have different kind of points. So there are three different ways you can get your Joe vote points. Okay, They call it Joe vote, which means how many points is your Joe token worth? So there are three categories to that. The first category is if you are a liquidity provider to the Joe and AVEX pool. That means you put Joe and AVEX together into the liquidity pool and you get your liquidity pool token out, your LP token out. If you have that, when you vote, your vote is worth two points. The other option is where you're staking Joe. So remember I told you you can get Joe, you stake Joe and you earn Joe. If you stake Joe, what you get is the X Joe. And this X Joe is worth one point. And lastly, if you have you just have Joe token, you don't know what to do with it, you don't want to stake, you don't want to provide liquidity, you, you don't want to do any farming, you just want to hold the Joe token, that's also fine. That gives you one point. So this is how they prioritize who these economic agents are by giving them more points to make changes to the ecosystem. If you're going to be a bit more passive and you're just holding the token or just staking it, you get one point. If you're a bit more active, you are providing liquidity, you are doing a lot more stuff, then you get two points. Let's conclude with some opinions. Why am I talking about Trader Joe? Well, because Trader Joe is extremely popular, especially on the Avalanche network, because number one, Avalanche is growing. The more Avalanche grows, the more the other protocols are also growing on Avalanche because there's more trading happening and more people are wanting to access the new tokens. And the way to do that is through a decentralized exchange. With that being said, why DEX? Why don't we see the same kind of stuff for other kind of protocols, let's say derivatives? Well, because DEX is the easiest way or easiest tool to enter the ecosystem. Think of the ecosystem as Disneyland and you need to exchange your US dollars or whatever currency that you have into Disneyland tickets and go and play the game. The DEX is kind of like the cashier that takes your currency and exchange it for your Disneyland tickets. This Disneyland tickets is the tickets to enter the Avalanche ecosystem. So DEXs are very, very important, especially for new growing ecosystems. And that's why we see a lot of these new blockchain protocols. One of the first things that they do is always to create an exchange. That is the easiest way for people to come into the ecosystem. So you can see that the, the total value locked and the trading volume is increasing in this Trader Joe protocol. And of course, it's also so popular because it's extremely easy to use. I mentioned that if you have token A and you want to be part of this liquidity provider, you don't know how, you just do a quick swap, put token A in, you say what kind of tokens or what kind of liquidity you want to provide, and then you just get your LP tokens out. So it's very easy for people to use. You don't have to be crypto native. You don't have to understand cryptography or you don't have to understand too much information. It's very easy and very simple to use. The second thing is that liquidity is king in a DEX or in, in any company or any protocol, any business. There's always one core thing that you need to succeed very well in and then everything else is a lot easier. In a DEX, that's liquidity. If you don't have liquidity, then you're not going to survive. If you don't have liquidity, then nobody's going to trade with you. You're going to have very high price volatility. There's going to be high price slippage and nobody really wants to use your product. So liquidity is the most important thing when it comes to DEX. And we can see that very obviously in the kind of economic policies, token incentives, the incentive mechanisms that they have. They're using Joe to attract a lot of liquidity. We have yield farming and we have staking as these various incentives. These are a lot of tokens that you can earn. You can earn the LP fees and then you can stake your LP and you can earn more Joe as well. So all these different rewards, all these different incentives are trying to bootstrap the system and try to increase liquidity. At the end of the day, DEX is very simple. The one with the highest liquidity wins. And sometimes, I don't know if you can call it a winner takes all or not because maybe the space is diverse enough, but whoever has most liquidity wins. And this is what they're trying to do. This is what all these different incentive mechanisms are trying to encourage more liquidity in the space. Thirdly, the voting mechanism. Of course, I'm going to talk about voting and governance. The voting that we usually see, or the popular ones that you probably understand, is Curve Token and Uni. So Curve is where you get to lock your CRV up, you get your, your VE CRV, and then you have different kind of voting powers. With Uni, it's just one token, one vote. So these are very different kind of voting mechanisms. Is one more superior than the other? I don't think we can conclusively say anything right now, but it's good that we're experimenting different kind of voting mechanisms. So here we talked about it and they are giving explicit preference or explicit power to LP providers. 
So LP providers, as I mentioned, are a different category of economic agent than just people who are holding Joe. People who are holding Joe, they're not taking any risks. They're just holding it, staking it, and then hoping prices go up. So they're not doing anything really, really beneficial to the core of this product, of this ecosystem. And so they get one voting point. Whereas LP token holders, they are doing something good. They're providing liquidity. As I mentioned, liquidity is key to survival of DEXs. And so they want to give more priorities to LP token holders. They increase the voting power of these LP token holders, also because they have more at stake. So this is something that is quite interesting. And it obviously incentivizes or prefers LP token holders. Hence, you can see a lot more tokens being locked in the entire mechanism because the incentive is all aligned towards that. Whatever that we see is really an outcome of this incentive that is being done in the Trader Joe protocol. And number four is that there is no token sale. The Joe token is only given out to LP token holders. As I mentioned, 50% of all the tokens, all 500 million tokens, are for liquidity providers. And this is really a way to give to the community. And if you're talking about decentralization, this is the best way of decentralization because you're rewarding people who are part of your ecosystem, who are helping you to grow your ecosystem. They don't have any investors, but they do have 10% allocation to any potential investors in the near future. And for Treasury and for the team, there's a three months lockup period, and then it will be released periodically. So that is the whole token structure. And if you think about it, you have three months where there's no new additional tokens being released, only the LP tokens. And so it becomes very attractive for people to want to come in and get the Joe tokens, because that's the only way to get the Joe tokens. Hence, all these different incentives, all these different mechanisms all come together to increase the liquidity, to increase the total value lot. And hence, we see a huge growth in this Trader Joe's protocol. And that's why we see a big boom. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for staying throughout the end. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for staying throughout this entire video. If you're interested to learn more and you want to join the community, do check out our Discord, check out our Academy, and you get to watch these videos for free as well without any ads. And also grab the book that I've talked about earlier on. The book summarizes a lot of what we're trying to build, what we're trying to design, and the different aspects that can be changed during the entire design process. We also just launched Econteric. Econteric is really economics plus esoteric because this space is so complicated and so difficult. What we want to do is to make it easier for anyone to come and learn and be part of this system. So in Econteric, we are breaking down the different analytics and different data to give you more insights to understand the robustness from a very fundamental level of the health of this ecosystem. So check out econteric.com and I'll see you there. Bye.